of the most fiercely debated questions in running is, does foot strike pattern matter? The reason this question gets asked a lot is because most of the impact forces and physical stressors directly involved in causing most running related injuries are derived from heel striking, not forefoot striking. Striking heel first when running has a ripple effect up the leg in ways that alters other stride parameters in that the farther back you strike the ground on your heel, the more the knee joint has a tendency to unbend and lock out and stiffen, the more this knee extension that's accompanied when setting up to heel strike also causes the foot to overreach too far in front of the body at landing. This is how you end up with a long over stride angle where the foot lands ahead of the ankle, knee, and hips which also causes the weight of the body to come to a crashing halt for a prolonged period of time. Out of this, a range of injurious impact forces are produced, such as a burst and collisional impact and compressive loading, which are well-known causes of long bone injuries. Another body segment that gets thrown out of neutral line just by landing heel first when running is the long overstride angle, which in turn causes the brake force to be even greater than it should be, from all of this, it's easy to see how landing heel first creates mechanics that work against you, causing running to be rough and tumble. To that point, is there a way for a heel strike runner to heel strike safely with less impact by implementing mechanical adjustments elsewhere to their form? Evidence strongly suggests that no, there is no way to heel strike safely, no matter what type of mechanical improvements that you make elsewhere to your heel strike running form, there isn't much you can change form-wise to lighten the impact load if you land heel first when you run. Proof of this came from a 2019 study in the Journal of Sports and Health Science, which is linked down below this video in the description box. The researchers wanted to see if heel strike running can be made safe. Can it be made just as safe as forefoot running by implementing a known low impact mechanical adjustment known as a higher step rate or higher cadence, which is the number of times the feet strike the ground per minute, whereby 170 and 200 steps per minute is associated with the lightest, least forceful landings, as well as the least amount of bone stress and mechanical stress on the knees and shins and hips. Basically, in principle, the higher your run cadence, the safer running becomes because you're essentially taking quicker, shorter, and therefore lighter steps because you are engaging a contact of the foot with the ground that is so brief that many forms of impact forces don't have time to escalate beyond magnitude and beyond intensity threshold. So it keeps impact within a safer range. Comparatively, one of the many problems of heel strike running is it naturally causes a lower step rate than forefoot strike running. The reason why is the longer over stride angle in heel strike running causes the foot to grapple longer with the ground. However, enforcing a higher cadence effectively closes the distance between initial foot strike position and the upper body. Therefore, time spent breaking is reduced along with the likelihood of injury, which is why cadence manipulation via increasing cadence is a very promising intervention to reduce a lot of running injuries. This is also why the researchers wanted to see if heel strike runners engaged a higher cadence in efforts to get their foot to land closer to their center of mass and therefore cut down on damaging brake stress. Would doing so produce any real benefits in injury prevention as compared with the heel strike runners who just switched to four foot running? The researcher's analysis showed that the heel strike runners who switched to forefoot running had the largest improvements by a long shot in bringing down literal bone breaking impact loads and that they had a 50% reduction in overall distressing impact loads and most exciting, they had a 41.7% reduction in damaging breaking and compressive loads at the one month follow-up, whereas the cadence retraining heel strike running group weren't nearly as successful because they only had minor reductions, 14.7% reduction in breaking and only 9% reduction in compressive impact loads. 
suggesting that upping your cadence while heel strike running does not provide anywhere near the same impact protection as dishing your heel strike to switch to forefoot running. Likewise, a higher cadence just so happens to be one of the major advantages of forefoot running. And because increased cadence and forefoot running go hand in hand is why forefoot running and reduced injury risk get consistently linked together. But remember, when the heel strike runners increased cadence, it didn't do much to bring down harmful impacts. So what more was it about forefoot running, aside from a higher cadence, that enabled the biggest improvements in impact reduction in the heel strike runners who switched to forefoot running? According to the study, the big answer is forefoot running made more functional use of the calf muscles as shock absorbers, which is where the bulk of the impact protection came from, whereas heel strike running disengages the calves from this protective contribution, which is why heel strike running, even with a higher cadence, continued to be stressful on the legs. The researchers discovered that the big reductions in impact in the forefoot running group was partly due to the activation of the calf muscles, which increased the deceleration time of the vertical velocity after ground contact. In other words, after initial ground contact on the forefoot, the heel dropped down to the ground, which activated the calf muscles to be shock absorbers, as well as ankle stabilizers. The engaging activity of the calves immediately after touchdown and forefoot running translated into a smoother rise to a single peak vertical ground reaction force, which reflected the direct effect of forefoot running on reducing stress loads on the shin as compared with heel strike running. And of course, the researchers confirmed and reaffirmed that forefoot running automatically engaged a higher step rates by bringing into line more quickly a shorter stride, which as expected, also helped minimize impact. The most important takeaway from all of this is foot strike type in running directly affects impact production by directly controlling multiple aspects of the leg that directly affects impact production. This is fundamentally why foot strike pattern matters in running because it's been made clear and it's most relevant that landing on your heel versus landing on your forefoot directly engages components of the leg differently, which in turn can either lead to more or less impact exposure. Heel strike running will always produce more impact than forefoot strike running because it literally counters the natural protective functional contributions of the calves turning the calves off as shock absorbers. It also hinders the efficient use of the Achilles tendon and the arch. The videos that I did on that are also linked down below this video in the description box. The net effect is impact is still too high. No matter how much you shorten your stride or how much you increase your cadence or how much cushioning you put under your foot, if you land heel first when you run, injuries will always be on the rise because there will always be dangerous rises in impact. This is never the case in forefoot running because it engages the mechanics that perfectly matches or complements the actual function of these structures in the lower leg, like properly engaging the calves as shock absorbers. And when these structures participate more fully in the way that they should, everything benefits. You're gonna save energy, and even better, you'll be more safeguarded from injury and therefore more able to adapt to new levels of training. Hope you've enjoyed this video. If you did, feel free to hit the thumbs up button as well as the subscribe button if you haven't already, where you'll stay more informed on heel strike running versus forefoot strike running, as well as more informed on how running barefoot can actually make you a better shod or shoe runner. Thank you so much for listening and watching. Have fun out there on the roads and trails. Bye for now.